Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's June 22nd. These are your headlines. First, we heard about fluke fishing really starting to come into its own in Rhode Island and Long Island Sound this week. We're also hearing about some really good surf fishing out on the outer beaches of Cape Cod this week. We're going to get a little rundown on how to enjoy that from the guys at the Goose Hummock Shop. And lastly, let's not forget that there's a two-week closure that begins this weekend for sea bass in Connecticut. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. And before we begin, we've got a couple of news items we've got to cover. The first one is that sea bass closure. And if you, uh, if you didn't know that was happening, really the only reason it happened is because we overfished last year, and that was pretty much across the eastern seaboard. Everybody overfished. There were a couple different ways to make up for this overage, and Connecticut decided uh, the best way to do it was to have this two-week closure. That allowed them to keep their regulations essentially the same otherwise. We've got, still got a 16-inch sea bass for a minimum size in Connecticut. We also still have the same bag limit. Um, the timing isn't really perfect because New York opens their sea bass season on the 23rd, so we're only going to get two days of overlap before we have that two-week closure, but it's going to open back up again on July 8th, so still got plenty of time to fish. Uh, I'm just going to take a little break. Uh, other bit, of course, is the giveaway, which is ongoing. Seeing lots of photos again this week, very good stuff. Um, we're going to be giving away a darter made by me. We're going to give away some no live bait needed stuff, and we're going to give away some stuff from Game On Lures. And it's going to wrap up on July 26th, so you still got lots of time to get those photos in. Basically, the rules are it's got to be a recent catch. It's got to show you with your fish. You can email it to me at danderson at thefisherman.com, or you can text it to the number on the screen. And uh, if you do elect to email it, just make sure you put giveaway or contest or something in the uh, subject line so I know how to sort it out and keep it out for the contest. And, um, you know, around the 26th, we'll see who wins, and then uh, we'll probably start another one up after that. Jumping over into the fishing reports, we're going to start up in Maine this week because I really just keep hearing over and over again about good striped bass fishing up in Maine. Uh, a couple guys I talked to are calling it the best uh, start to the striped bass season that they've ever seen. Um, they're seeing real, they're seeing really good numbers of fish, but they're also seeing some really nice fish, and that's basically from the New Hampshire border all the way up to like just north of Portland. So that whole area is just seeing lots of good fish right now, and uh, lots of good fishing. Another thing you can take advantage of from Maine or from northern Massachusetts is the haddock fishery out in uh, the Gulf of Maine. That's been really good. Guys are getting some, they're crushing the haddock and they're getting some nice codfish as a uh, welcome bycatch. Um, you just got to get the weather to get out there. Um, hasn't been as easy over these last few weeks, but um, you know when you get the weather, the fishing's really good. Dropping down into Massachusetts, up on the North Shore, I saw some really nice fish uh, caught in the surf from the North Shore this week. For a little bit more on that and some of the other fisheries on the North Shore of Massachusetts, let's toss it over now to Jim Jukes. I'm uh, here helping set up for the Plum Island Surfcasters meeting. We're going to have Ben Cahagan from Mass Fisheries here doing a presentation. Uh, and actually a club is a pretty good way to meet people, learn some things, and uh, get to know what other surf casters are out there in your area and stuff. And uh, then like tonight, we get, we get dinner. Yep, five bucks, you get a dinner, dessert, you get a little show, presentation, we're gonna have some raffles going on. Everything you normally do at these club meetings, I highly recommend anybody out there that uh, can join a club. Uh, but on to the report. New Moon was not good to me. I had plenty of fish, just nothing big. Uh, the reports from the area were very good. Uh, I did hear of one fish that supposedly went 60 pounds, uh, but the river is holding plenty of big fish. Commercial season has started. Uh, couldn't find a single eel on Monday morning to save your life. All the re all the shops in the whole area were sold out. So who knows what the commercial guys have done. But 
uh, all the surf casters I know have done well down to Gloucester and up into New Hampshire. Uh, one of our members up in Maine hit a couple of nice fish into the 40, 42 inch range. Uh, the surf has been rough on Plum Island because of this east wind and northeast wind. Really sucks when that happens. Um, everything else as far as the freshwater, I know guys are still getting pike and everything else. Uh, but other than that, the fishing has been good, but one of the things is it's spotty. You find a pod, you'll get into fish. Uh, the next night, they're gone. So I think that's just a sign of the fisheries. Who knows? Uh, talked to a bunch of guys that were towards Boston too and they, they have some areas that did really well but that's for another time uh, everything else in this whole area is good uh, we'll see what happens as the season progresses uh, okay that's about it from here get out catch them up join the club heading out of the North Shore down through Boston still got good striper fishing happening all through there but the next place that really has been pumping out some good fishing is like Situate, Marshfield, Plymouth, that whole stretch right there has really been doing well for striper fishermen. And it's, it's working out for boat guys and surf guys. Boat guys are fishing the offshore ledges. They're doing it with eels. They're doing it with chunk bait. They're doing it with live bunker. Uh, the surf guys are doing, I've heard a lot of guys doing well on needlefish and live eels from the surf out there. Uh, but a lot of nice fish being caught. A lot of fish in the 40 inch range, all the way up to 40 pounds. Um, so that area is definitely a place you can concentrate on. Uh, heading across the canal, the bay side of the Cape, I didn't hear a lot this week. I'm sure that there's decent fishing going on, just didn't get a lot of reports from there. But everybody seems to be focused on the outer beaches where the surf fishing has been really, really good. Um, hearing about fish from like 25 to 45 inches and, um, and really good numbers. But for a little bit more on how to take advantage of that, we're going to toss it over now to Ian Moneybags McPartland from the Goose Hammock Shop. It's your boy Bags, hitting you with a little fishing report. Mid-June here on a beautiful day on Town Cove. Hitting it from Aurora's Bennington. Loving it. Super comfy. Nice and warm out here. All right. So, meet out with Newhouse last week. Slammed them. Was it uh, bookend charters? Went out of uh, Pamet. Got them uh, on the morning. Good old fashioned little top knock. Uh, we were slapping them on the phone. Twitch Bay was getting it done too. Then we uh, we left there, got on some of uh, Newhouse's flounder numbers, loaded up, got some nice dinner. That was absolutely delicious. And then we came back in the afternoon, hitting the dock. We were trying to get out of there by like two o'clock and the diamond jigs were absolutely slapping them. Um, we, you know, Eric was marking them on the bottom. We got out with the 07 and the 27 and they were absolutely slapping. It made it really nice because we were, in the afternoon we were getting like slot fish, so they weren't like monsters, and it just made a really easy catch and release, and they were just smoking it every drop. So, an absolutely blast. And then uh, hitting the beach, as everybody knows, my specialty, um, SP has been out of, you know. Look at that thing, man. That's ridiculous. No words needed. We got a freshie. So before and after pick, absolutely slapping. Um, this is our first year for a super strike in the shop. This needle has been absolutely smoking them. Uh, I got this in the blurple too with a little bit of flag on the back that has been absolutely slamming them this week. Um, I probably got like three quarters of my fish on the back hook here too. So it was nice and easy catch and release. This thing absolutely bombs it. It's the Ely color is my absolute favorite. Um, blurple, you know, honorable mention, but this is absolutely my number one. So get out there, slap them. Mid June, lots of big cows around. Um, night tides are going to be good. We got, was a new moon coming up at the end of the week here? So, everybody get out there, tight lines. Have a great day. Peace. Boat guys, you can head around the end of the Cape down to the Monomoy Rips. Uh, that seems to be the area where there's just lots and lots of striper action. I haven't seen a lot of really big fish come out of there, but there's a lot of slot fish and a lot of fish up to like 40 inches. Uh, 
some of the best ways that guys get it done out there is throwing um, throwing soft plastics on lead heads or even fishing unweighted soft plastics at the top of those big sand humps out there. Um, also, guys do a lot of parachute jigging out there and pull a lot of fish out of that, pull a lot of fish out of there that way. Uh, fluking out at Nantucket Shoal it hasn't been as good as what most people would expect. Um, I suspect it may have more to do with the weather, just not as many people getting out there. But um, by and large, the reports I've been getting from Nantucket Shoal have been kind of lean. The better fluking's been happening in Nantucket Sound and Vineyard Sound, just on some of the shoals, uh, you know, in, in closer to shore, like middle ground, like hedge fence. Uh, so that's going to give you a better option, um, at least for right now, until we get really good weather, you can get back out to the get out to Nantucket. Um, on the sea bass end of things, you're going to want to cut through into Buzzards Bay. That's where the best sea bass action's been happening. Um, hearing about a lot of nice fish in there, fishing like 35 to 65 feet of water, and uh, even some guys going as deep as 80 feet, but uh, finding some pretty good fish uh, in Buzzards Bay. Striper fishing in Buzzards Bay kind of took a step back again this week. We had a little blip uh, in action last week, and it seems to have kind of cooled off. Uh, heading up into the canal, seems like the breaking tides were mediocre. For a little bit more on that, we're going to toss it over now to East End Eddie. Hi, Dave. It's been a terrific week of surf casting here in the canal. Bent rods all along. Most of the action I've seen has been uh, west of the Bourne Bridge. But the new moon on Sunday brought a lot of bait into the canal from on the east tide from uh, Buzz's Bay. There had been a lot of uh, mackerel in the west end, but now there's mackerel everywhere. I had a beautiful 10-inch mackerel swung right by my boots this morning. Um, so there's bait everywhere, and the predators are following. So we had... Uh, the day, uh, two days before the new t the new moon, uh, Keith Dacey, OFD, caught a nice 34 inch at three o'clock in the morning on a uh, tsunami white shad. And uh, the day the day before the uh, new moon, I caught a 36 inch on a uh, white guppy jobo on the top. Um, the day the day of the new moon, uh, I caught a 38 inch with a Bill Hurley canal killer. Uh, on the bottom, a nice white uh, shad, I mean white uh, paddle tail, and uh, that's infused with fish oil, so it works good. Um, and uh, the day after the new, of course, the, the new moon was on Father's Day, the guys were out everywhere, and the day after the new moon, uh, Bill on the grill Prudo, who's an experienced canal rat, caught a 42 inch, and it was in close to shore when he picked it off, and uh, he was fishing with Tim Hollywood Petraka who a few days before had caught a 29-inch uh, bluefish, so there's blues mixed in it as well. And Timmy that, that day caught a, uh, a slot as well. Um, so it's great here. Guys are, uh, guys are having a great time. And um, so I just wanted to give you a couple of canal announcements. On uh, June 23rd to 27th, the Tidal Flats uh, Recreation Area will be closed. The Army Corps of Engineers is doing work on the uh, um, on the parking lot there, and uh, and that's the, the Tidal Flats is the place that's also known as Bell Road, and um, June 24th this Saturday, uh, there's going to be a uh, boating and water safety course, uh, safety day and instruction and everything will, will take place at the uh, visitors center on the Cape side, uh, in Sandwich on the um, where the Coast Guard uh, station is, and that's from 10 to 2 on Saturday. Uh, rain or shine, um, and then um, so I just I just wanted to give you my my tip of the week is that uh, you know the most the most exciting way to catch a fish is on the surface with a surface plug, and so when you're working a pencil, there's there's different ways to work a pencil. I actually there's there's two main ways, and I actually employ both of them on my retrieve at, at one point or another. So one way is to hold the butt of your rod in between your legs and grab your rod above the reel and just shake it violently so that the tip just keeps moving back and forth and that causes a commotion in the water. Um, and you know, you don't want big splashes, but you want constant splashes. The other way is to just reel it and kind of jerk it a little bit and give it a little bit of a little bit of a splash, but move it a little bit more slowly through the water. I kind of use both of them and I use the slow version more often than the than the commotion, raising the commotion version, but um, I like to use the, the, the jerking violently pot uh, just to cause a fish uh, to notice it. 
and then I slow it down and I, I go back and forth. So there's different ways to do it, but catching a fish on top is definitely the most exciting way when you see a striper come, you know, probably right off the bottom and then just explode right on your lure. So until next time, catch a big one. Jumping over into Rhode Island, the bass fishing around still very good, especially around Newport. We still got fish leaving the bay in big numbers and they seem to be finding what they are looking for because they're not going too far. Um, I saw coral had a really nice fish this week, 47 inches, 30 inch girth. That puts it close to 50 pounds. Uh, that fish took a mackerel head, she said. Um, a lot of guys getting big fish on eels. I found out that's what Robbie got his two big fish on last week. So um, even in the daytime, the eels are crushing it. So lots of good fish concentrated around Aquidneck Island, around uh, Beaver Tail, and around Narragansett right now. For a little bit more on that and some of the other things going on in the eastern half of Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecki. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys. Nice to be back reporting uh, again for you. Got a quick report for you from Maho Bay, Sakonet, uh, Kikamuir, the Coles River, Warren River, Barrington River, and uh, Barrington Beach. Uh, uh, actually, have all been really good. Um, and then just like to welcome back the Cocktail Blues because I had several outings this week and found nothing but small blue fish from about 12 to 20 inches long, uh, feeding on sand eels. And uh, first off, I went out on Sunday, uh, try, try to get some fluke uh, with my daughter, and uh, she pretty much outfished me, which was okay. Um, she ended up getting uh, the one keeper fluke that we, ca we caught was uh, 21 inches. And we caught that up at Fogland Point again in about 33 feet of water this time. Uh, the wind had picked up, the, the drift was fast. Uh, we ended up seeing a bunch of birds working on the uh, Portsmouth side. And uh, we headed over and uh, lo and behold, there was huge, huge schools of uh, small cocktail blues there. So we, uh, we ended up uh, throwing a couple of top water plugs in the four inch range and connected on a bunch of blues, had a lot of fun. Um, and you know, we ended our day after that and wind started blowing 20. So, uh, also, I uh, this weekend I also visited uh, Barrington Beach and I was there about 5 30 in the morning, right at sunrise. And uh, there was bait and blues all over the beach. Uh, I did see some stripers, I just couldn't get to them because the blues had uh, pretty much taken over. And I, every time I made a cast out there, uh, I would just get a blue right away. So they're there. So that's a, another good opportunity for you there. Uh, I fished the Warren River on, on the afternoon and blue fish in there too, right? Where the American tourister is. If you cast into the current there, there's, there's tons of blues there and you can see them popping all over the place. There's cormorants on them. There's uh, small terns working above them. So if you find the birds, you're gonna find those fish. Uh, Barrington River was also good. Uh, but I seem to find that there are some more stripers holding in the Barrington River than there are in the Warren River or the Coles River. But uh, if you get that four inch popper and get in those rivers, I'm sure you're going to connect with some, uh, some decent fish. Um, scup's been really good too lately. Um, scup fishing from the Stone Bridges uh, um, and Tiverton. Uh, was loaded to a lot of guys out there when I, uh, when I boated through and they're all. Uh, we're doing well catching some scup. Uh, I also know that the uh, shoreline that abuts the Roger Williams College in Bristol is another great spot for uh, for big scup there. Um, we've done well. Um, I mean, fluke is okay in this kind of river. It's not good. We did catch a lot of shorts. Uh, so I'm just going to be persistent and keep trying. Eventually, we're going to get into like a bunch of bigger fish uh, for that. Uh, I did find that uh, when I did fish the Coles River this, this uh, week, the bass were like micro size, really small bass. Good sign, love to catch them. Uh, they were definitely popping on some of the glass minnows and uh, some of the smaller peanut butter that was in there. So there are some bass in that incoming current. Um, I haven't been doing well with the tide going out there. So uh, the big thing is, is there's a lot of sand eels in the bay. And I think we all know that. And uh, I'm still keeping that presentation small because uh, I'm doing better on the smaller presentation. So uh, if you're gonna get out there, guys, uh, tight lines, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Heading out front, kind of out past the reefs in Newport. 
really good bass fishing happening out there as well and we're starting to see more and more sea bass action now too these fish are starting to fill in on some of these inshore reefs you're fishing the same depths you know basically like 35 to 65 maybe as deep as 80 feet uh, lots and lots of scup out there too so you can uh, you can take advantage of that and you can do that all the way into the shallow water along the shoreline here um, but bottom fishing is very good in Rhode Island waters right now. Uh, for a little bit more on that and some of the other things going on in the central part of the state, let's toss it over now to Coral Aiello from Sarah Star Charters. Hi Dave, Coral here from Sarah Star Charters with the Rhode Island Fishing Report. It's pretty much uh, the same as it has been these last couple of weeks. There's still tons of bait around. The sand eels are pretty much everywhere, uh, which can make it a little tricky to get these bass to hit because um, they're on such small bait. So like small profile lures will work best. I know the big bass have been crushing the eels. Um, you know, there's I did see a school of pogies out front um, yesterday with big bass busting on top of them, which is a great time if you run into that uh, to use some top water lures um, like the dock, um, something big profile like the pogies. Um, but again, they are a little finicky. Sometimes, you know, you can be in a blitz and you can throw pretty much anything at them and they'll just turn their nose up to it. Um, and every once in a while you'll get one to hit. But again, you can still catch them. They are just, they're just picky, you know, especially when these baits are super small and they're hard to match sometimes, um, you know, but there's still bluefish, there's tons of, um, there's bass. I mean, they're, they're pretty much everywhere. And sometimes that makes it difficult because they're not in these spots that they normally just hang out at. So you'll go over a spot, you'll see a bunch of fish, then you'll go back and then they move. So you kind of have to almost, you know, you're chasing the fish around because they're chasing the bait. Um, you know, but it's it's still kind of what it normally is like these last couple of years. It's, it's been like this this time of year. Um, the sea bass bite, I have to say, is a little slow, specifically in Newport. Uh, but anyway, that's where I'm fishing. Um, it's, it's kind of slow. I mean, we are getting some nice ones, uh, but you really have to weed through a lot of, it seems like there's a lot of 15 inch fish, which is an inch short for, for us for charter fishing. It has to be 16 inches, but you can still catch them. Um, you know, there's the fluke bite. I haven't done a whole lot of fluking this last, you know, this last week, but I know that there has been a decent fluke bite up the bay. Um, and I know that they're out front, which again, you have to work for them, weed through some shorts, you know, find some keepers. Um, I mean, it's pretty much, you know, status quo. Um, you know, these last couple of years, this bait sometimes kind of meth doesn't mess it up, but there's just so much going on that it's hard to get these fish uh, to want to hit anything else. Um, you know, but there's still tons, tons of stuff going on out there and, you know, hopefully in these next couple of weeks, these fish will settle in and they'll be a little easier, you know, to catch. Now, some of the fluking that's going on on the, on the eastern half of Rhode Island is happening, like, like we were saying last week, like up around the uh, Jamestown Bridge has been very good, the Newport Bridge has been very good, but also outside the center wall and outside the East Gap is another good place you can go to find some fluke, especially when they're a little bit scarce. Um, so that's one place you can go for fluke. Block Island's been putting out some good numbers of fluke as well, and there's some big bass on the shoals, I mean on the ledge, but um, inshore, the surf guys have been really struggling out of Block. For a little bit more on what's going on in the boats out of Block Island, let's toss it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. Hey Dave, John Lee, JL Charters. Um, this week, actually the past couple of days, was the first um, couple of days so far where there's been a sign of fluke around Point Judith and, and down the South Shore. Um, I went out yesterday and today for fluke. I myself didn't do that well, but I caught. And the encouraging thing is there's actually quite a few throwbacks. So that's a good sign that there's some smaller fish out there. We did find some good fish. Um, and then people around me caught some fish. So that's uh, the past few days have been the best sign of fluke I've seen so far. Hopefully that continues. Take care. Have a good one. Later on. Heading back in towards South County. Uh, seems like the breachways had a little uptick in activity this week. We saw some bigger fish come out of the breachways. Saw a little bit better action. Saw a few more bluefish in the area as well. And then fluking out off the beaches has been getting better. It's still not what it historically could be, but it's it's the best it's been this year so far. Seen a little bit more bait in the area. Seen some bigger fluke in the area. So. Um, that's something that you can take advantage of in the western half of Rhode Island, and that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. Crossing over into Connecticut, the race fished well again through this moon. I uh, didn't hear about any really big fish, but the diamond jiggers were doing really well on bass and bluefish. It's a little bit of a weaker moon tide this time around, which probably made it a little easier to, to get that done. And uh, heard about good catches throughout the race again this week. 
Fluking in the Eastern Sound has been very inconsistent. You talk to one guy and he says it's been horrible. You talk to another guy and he had a great day. Um, it seems like the guys that are doing the most damage are starting by looking for the bait. So if you can find the clouds of squid or if you can find some clouds of other bait near the bottom, you're going to have a better shot than you are just fishing a spot that you know has been historically good. Uh, I did hear about a few more fish around Isabella this week. So things are starting to come together, but it just still isn't quite what we expect it to be at this time of the year in the Eastern Sound. Getting up closer to the Connecticut River, a push of larger bass showed up there, which has sort of triggered an avalanche of anglers. We've seen surf guys, kayak guys, boat guys, all trying to get in on the action. There's been some, some nice fish around the mouth of the river. Uh, for a little bit more on that and some of the other things going on in that region, we're going to toss it over now to Captain Mike Roy from Real Cash Truck. Hey guys, for this week's Fisher Report, striped bass continues to improve as fish migrate from western Long Island Sound to eastern Long Island Sound. Uh, the majority of the reefs in the eastern Long Island Sound are holding striped bass, as well as all the adjacent rivers and estuaries. Um, the ticket, uh, recently, obviously live bait is always going to produce. Uh, the Ben Parker's Flutter Spoon 8 and 9 inch has been producing well, as well as the typical soft plastics. Uh, there are still some gator blues around, so be prepared for them to chop up your baits as well. Um, stripers, uh, the quality of the size of the fish is definitely improving. There's a lot of nice sized fish around. I expect that continues to continue to improve now that we're post moon. We have a little bit of a easterly wind the next few days, but I think after that, the weather's gonna settle down into a consistent pattern. As far as the black sea bass fishing goes, um, I hear that is still uh, fishing strong with lots of keeper size sea bass mixed in. And the New York season, I believe, opens next week as well. So a lot of good things to come. Good luck. Heading up the Connecticut River Valley, we're going to toss it over now to Rowan Light. Hey, everybody. So the forecast over the coming week or so definitely suggests we're going to get a lot of rain and some kind of moderate temperatures. I really like that. Uh, do not despair. Bad weather and warm water, freshwater fish go together pretty darn well, especially largemouth and smallmouth, uh, as we've got a lot of our young of the year fish kind of trickling out. Herring and shad haven't really started yet. They, they'll do that later in the summer. But you have a lot of young of the year uh, fall fish and spot tail shiners and species like that. Um, they get kind of active. They get pushed out of different areas when water levels rise or when we get big pushes of rain that change the water temperature. And that can really get the fishing uh, uh, quite red hot. The main stem of the Connecticut's going to be a, a, a big part of the play. Um, some fish will push up into the tributaries again and, and make moves almost like they did during the spawning runs, especially if you get really significant spikes in water level. Uh, but mostly, I'm going to be fo focusing on main river spots, points, weed edges, things like that, and fishing topwater lures and big streamers on the fly rod. Uh, but this should be a great time uh, to get some pike, uh, mid-season pike, and get some of the bigger, more aggressive uh, smallmouth strikes of the year. Uh, so get out there. Even though the weather's going to be crap, it's going to be pretty good fishing, I expect. Uh, good luck, everyone. And just taking a short ride to the west, we're going to take make a quick stop in Westbrook. We're going to check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. Uh, you can probably hear it and see it on my shirt. It is windy out there. We have got a pretty nasty east wind um, kind of in and around us for these next few days. Uh, but there are a lot of fish around if you can find some protected water. On the striper front, uh, we've got good bites in the rivers, um, live bunker primarily. Um, those fish are really focused in on the bunker, so if you can cast net or snag those guys, throw them on a circle hook, that's going to be your best bet for a consistent bite. They will also take top water and uh, soft plastic offerings um, early, late, and if the weather permits, like overcast rain, things like that, um, they tend to bite a little better. But your best bet for a striper bite right now is live bunker. Um, in terms of sea bass, they are mostly deep right now. Those are the reports we have gotten and found. Um, I would primarily start around 50, 60 feet and go out deeper up to 100 plus um, if you're not getting bites. Fluke have been a little shallower. Uh, we've had good fluke bites in 30 uh, to 50 plus um, with some good fish coming in recently. So that's a good start to the season there. Um, otherwise, things are on a roll for our spring slash early summer run. And uh, hopefully this wind cools down and uh, we'll see you out there on the water. Heading out of the Westbrook area, we're starting to get into the part of the sound where I think of as being some of the best sea bass fishing. Unfortunately, we're only going to have two days to take advantage of it because it's going to be closed as of Sunday. That's the 25th, so the season closes on the 24th. Um, and 
the good thing is, is you're going to be able to cross over into New York right now. So the ends of those reefs are, you know, kind of close to the line. You can, you can drift as far as you want for these next two days and you're going to have to wait a little while. But we are hearing about some better sea bass fishing in that area. Porgy fishing throughout the sound has been phenomenal. Doesn't matter if you're fishing from shore or from a boat. Uh, you're getting them in five feet of water, you're getting them in 65 feet of water. They're, they're everywhere, they're abundant, they're just related to structure. Uh, getting out a little further west, you're starting to see those waves of big stripers that are out in the western sound just starting to move uh, further and further east. So when you're fishing off of Madison, when you're fishing off of Milford, you're, you're going to want to pay attention to that 50 line. That's where it always seems to be very good. And uh, a lot of guys do well chunking at night. And, uh, you know, if you do that, you fish that area and you get on the right pile of fish, you get a very good chance of breaking 40 or even 50 pounds. It happens every year and it's happening again right now. When you get out further to the west, you're hearing about really good fluke fishing on the New York side. We're still hearing about a lot of big bass in the extreme western sound. For more on that and some of the other fisheries that are taking place in that area, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. The fluke fishing this past week has really steadily picked up. We've seen some nicer fluke and three to four man limits on boats on our side now. Can 26 and 24 has been the hot spots, drifting squid, spearing, you know, gulp on bucktails. Uh, we know customer Mark Hiller had them up to 10 pounds. Rick had them up to eight pounds with their limits. I know other people, you know, a lot in that four to six pound class. So it's been hot, so get out on there and get on the flat fish. The striped bass fishing still remains steady. It's starting to slow down a little on our deeper water reefs with these big schools coming by. But uh, guys are doing really well drifting live bait, three weight, or with the flutter spoon still. And then chunking at night is also yielding some big fish. The bass bite around the islands has really blown up this past week with the new moon. A lot of the bunkers moved inshore and it brought a lot of big fish in shore. So we've seen a lot of nice fish on the fly rod, you know, spook shallow, or drifting live bait on weighted on some shallow water reefs. The scup are really moving into the beaches. We've seen them up to like 14 to 16 inches from the piers now, like Calf Pastor and then Sherwood Island. And then anglers on the boat are finding some really big hub caps. I would still, you know, try some deeper spots like 28C, some wrecks. Also on the wrecks, 50 foot or more, the sea bass bite, we've seen some really big knotheads. And then on the freshwater side, the trout fishing still remains steady in our local rivers like the Nauk River, Saugatuck, Mianus. We should see that little slow down. Your best bet is to get out there early morning or evening. That's when the trout are gonna be active. All right, thanks and good luck. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. I hope you're gonna find them useful. Before we wrap things up for the day, let's take a quick peek at what's going on in the dream boat standings. Now it's time for the dream boat update. Eddie Terrabiel from Long Island is back. He's proven himself as one of the contest's most consistent competitors, and he did it again this week with an 8.56 pound weak fish, the second largest entered this year. That single entry had huge implications in the top three. Kyle Krause was dropped down to 10 points and has been upstaged by Massimo Polverenti's giant bluefish, which now holds third place with 10 points. In second place, we have last week's leader, Bobby Cifarelli, with 18 points, and Eddie Terrabile has reclaimed the overall lead with 21 points. Another sponsor has thrown their hat in the ring. Surehold is putting up 10 $200 gift cards for the top three anglers in the contest and all seven largest of species winners. Thank you, Shorehold. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is a fisherman subscriber-only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new 21-foot Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. And last but not least, just got to run through my little spiel here. Um, if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. That'll give you a full taste of what we offer. You're going to get, you're going to see all the reports. They cover Delaware all the way up to Maine. You're going to see all the articles. We have three different editions. We have the New Jersey Delaware edition, we have the Long Island edition, and we have the, my edition, the New England edition. And we cover the entire shoreline from Delaware all the way up to Maine. We do a lot of travel stuff. You might get some Florida stuff in there. You're definitely going to get some stuff from like the Great Lakes region. And you're going to get the most comprehensive report section that you're going to find anywhere for our region. We cover it all. We cover offshore, inshore, surf, 
kayak, boat, it's all covered in the magazine. We've got articles to tell you how to do it, and we've got reports to tell you where to do it. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. You're going to get 26 digital issues sent to your email box. Those are going to come between April and mid-November. And you're going to get 12 monthly paper editions sent to your mailbox at your house. And those come once a month, and they cover it all. And again, it's 30 bucks. You can't go wrong. Definitely check it out. If you're still not interested, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching. We'll see you next week.